Hello, my name is Brian Canner. I'm a book and audiobook publishing consultant with My Word Publishing, and I'd like to do a very quick video today to kind of share some thoughts with you about audiobook marketing. Um, and specifically, I'd like to address uh, the free codes that you have available um, to you through ACX. So this is if you have published your audiobook through ACX and it's available through uh, Audible. So basically that's within the uh, Amazon ecosphere uh, that you're going with Audible that you've produced your book or made your book available through ACX. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to just talk a little bit about some um, audiobook marketing ideas. I'll start off with some very high level principles. Uh, let me see, I'm gonna do a, a quick screen share with you here. I've got a couple of slides that we can reference. Um, so I'll go ahead and bring that up now. There, you should be able to see my slides. Um, so audiobook marketing and free codes. Um, I'll, I'll talk. start off with some kind of just high-level principles about marketing. I personally, by the way, I, I, I've been listening to audiobooks back from when uh, they were on cassette tape, and you either could order them through uh, the mail to where you would not buy them, but you'd rent them through the mail um, and you could listen to them. You had a certain amount of time and then you had to ship them back. Or uh, if you were driving around the country, you could uh, uh, stop by Cracker Barrel and they had uh, first on, on cassette tape and then later on CD, um, they had audio books that you could uh, rent and listen to while you were driving and then return back to a Cracker Barrel. So I've been listening to audio books from way back. Um, all, I'm an author as well. I, I write primarily historical fiction, although I do have a new release coming up that's a, um, a contemporary romantic drama, kind of a military romance uh, uh, novel. But anyway, um, I always get all of my books produced as audiobooks. Love the format. Um, the audiobook segment is the fastest growing segment of the uh, of the publishing world these days in terms of what's being consumed by readers and listeners. Um, it now uh, comprises about 25 percent uh, of the books that are purchased are put purchased in the audiobook format. And so that has grown as a, a very significant um, slice over the past probably five, six, seven years or so um, to the point that it's at right now. So a um, lot of interest in audiobooks. It is a format that uh, if you have that available, um, you have opened up the opportunity for uh, a, a more diverse market. But um, uh, like I said, I don't run ads specifically for my audiobooks. I do I can do some marketing things for my audiobooks. We'll talk about those in a minute, but I don't run ads specifically for my audiobooks. Um, if I advertise, I'll advertise primarily the ebook. And I'm talking about if I'm running paid ads on either Amazon, uh, Facebook, or BookBub, or Pinterest, or any of those kinds of things, right? I will advertise my ebook. Um, and that will, if people click through that link, they'll go to the product description page on Amazon. And then it'll have all the formats that are available to them there. Um, so they can then choose the format that they want. So if they if they show up there because of an ad primarily for an ebook, but they see that there's a paperback, a hardback, or an audiobook, then they can uh, they can purchase that. Um, by the way, when I am doing paid ads, like Facebook ads, I love Facebook ads. I think they're probably uh, the most effective uh, ad platform out there because of the targeting algorithms that Facebook has. But anyway, if I'm using Facebook ads, I'll count my ROI for those ads. You know, I have a certain ad spend that I spend, and then I, I calculate the uh, income that I've received. I'll calculate the ROI, not including my audiobooks, uh, just from the revenues that I get from either uh uh, print sales, ebook sales, or uh, KU page reads. Um, and then my my revenues that I get from uh, audiobook sales, quite honestly, are just kind of icing on the cake on top of that. So anyway, that's the mindset and the approach that I kind of bring to it. Um, I do include a little, there's little icons that you can get for your advertisement uh, images that say available in audio, and it's got kind of a little audible uh, logo on that. 
um, I will use that for sure on my advertisements. So if somebody is in Facebook, they happen to be an audio book listener, then they can uh, see from that icon on my image that it's available in audiobook format. And so they might click through and then go there to find the audiobook. Um, I also uh, can, when you're using the targeting features, uh, identifying the audience that you're you're trying to target in Facebook ads, um, I can include interests of audiobooks or Audible um, in the characteristics of the target audience. And so that will help to include people that are interested in audiobooks. But that's about as far as I go again. So I'm not necessarily making the ad specifically for the audiobook. I'm making the ad for my book and allowing people to understand that it's available in audiobook format if that's what they would prefer. I, I will note BookBub has a paid option. A uh, paid ad option specifically for audiobooks. So you can run one that targets specifically audiobook listeners through BookBub. Uh, there's a couple of little tricks that you have to do um, if the book is available only through Audible and, and not through some of the other platforms that you could get through BookBub. Um, but I will tell you that my results with, uh, with <laughs> these ads on BookBub, my personal results, you might be different. Um, but uh, I, I ran the ads based on principles that I've learned on how to run BookBub ads, and my results were absolutely abysmal. Um, I ran an ad for uh, 15 days at a cost of $50, just as kind of a test to see if this worked. I got one click out of about 500 impressions. So it was uh, not a success uh, from my perspective. I probably won't be doing it again. Anyway, I would like to talk a little bit about the free codes. Um, I, I assume that if you have done an audiobook project in uh, ACX, you know that you get these, but you get 25 free codes for each of the U.S. and the U.K. markets. Um, and so those those have to be redeemed separately. They're, they're not a total of 50 um, codes that you can use back and forth. It's specifically 25 codes for the U.S., 25 codes for the U.K. Um, and you can also get 25 additional codes for each one of those markets uh, once you've met these conditions. And the conditions are that uh, up to 10 of your free codes for, for whichever market have been redeemed already. So you gave those out to somebody, somebody came in and, and redeemed that code for a free copy of the audiobook. Um, and in addition to that, you have a total of 100 sales, qualified sales, across your entire uh, catalog. So if you have one book, then you would obviously had to have 100 sales of that particular book. And that doesn't include free code redemptions, right? So these have to be books that people have either um, redeemed one of their audible credits for or that they've just paid for. Um, but now once you have a total of 100 sales, now if you have three, four, five books out there, Again, that might only be 20, 25 books as sales from each one of the books. As long as you have a total for of 100 sales for your catalog, then you can request those additional 25 codes for each market, the U.S. and the U.K. So you have a, you know, a total, uh, as long as your book is selling and people are redeeming your codes, you've got an opportunity to have up to 50 free codes uh, to give away. So what are some of the things that you can do with those free codes? Uh, here, here's a few ideas. Obviously, if you have an email distro list of fans, um, you can you could offer them out through that. Um, uh, if you had beta listeners, I, I've done that before. I've used um, some of the AI voices to do narration for my uh, for my book when it was still in when I was still writing it when I was trying to get beta impact uh, input so I had beta readers for my ebook and I had beta listeners for my audiobook version um, and so I wanted to reward some of them I knew they liked audiobooks the final version was going to be very different from what they uh, listened to as a beta listener and so I offered them free codes um, as as a reward for my beta listeners um, one of the big things that you can obviously do with um, with these codes is offer them to people and request a review back. Um, just like you would my, maybe give away a free copy of your ebook 
um, you know, through Goodreads or one of those other kinds of platforms. Um, that gives you an opportunity uh, to get reviews back from people. Now, I, the note down here is that reviewers, just like with the the ebook copy or even a paper book copy, if they've got a free copy of that, then they need to acknowledge that uh, in the review and say, "Hey, I was I was asked to provide an honest review in exchange for a free copy of the of the book." Um, so uh, getting there, and there's a few sites I'm going to show you on the next slide of where you can. Um, use these that will help you distribute your codes uh, to listeners that come into these sites um, that are looking to be able to do that, you know, exchange a review for a free, for a free copy. Um, you can run contests with these. There are a number of websites that will run contests. Uh, my only caution with those is a lot of times that people that are in those contests are really just looking for freebies um, and they're not ne necessarily there to sign up for your e email distro list or you know something like that it, your um, your newsletter list any of those kinds of things um, so if they have to sign up to the list in order to enter the contest once they win a lot of times they'll just pull themselves off uh, the the list um, and they sometimes won't even give you the review so uh, I, I'm not as big of a fan on contests, but you could have other kinds of contests in different con in different contexts. Um, uh, those promotional sites, and again, it's sort of related to the reviewers, and I'll uh, I'll address that on the next slide. Um, if you are a nonfiction author, um, these free codes are a great way to either get clients. You know, you can offer somebody a free uh, audiobook code to your book, and as they read the book or listen to the book, uh, they might be interested in the service that you provide. Um, if you're, for example, a consultant or if you're a counselor or something like that. Um, so if you have clients, um, you can also give them out as rewards to uh, clients that have been with you for a long time. Um uh, seminar attendees. So if you're a speaker, you conduct seminars, obviously at seminars would be a great opportunity to give away those codes uh, to people who attend the seminar. Uh, and uh, again, might spur some word of mouth about the audiobook to people that they know. Um, influencers, and that's a, a broad category, but uh, if you know influencers on social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, those kinds of things, um, you might share an audiobook code with them. They listen to it and they pump their your book on uh, on their social media outlet. Um, and then also, if you are invited to do uh, uh, as a podcast guest, uh, you might consider giving a code to one of the either the podcast host, uh, again, either before the podcast or after the podcast. Um, so that that person might mention your book on a, on a later podcast. Um, or you could, if they have the call-in capability or things like that, you might run a little mini contest during the podcast uh, to give away a couple of codes to lucky listeners. So those are just a few ideas of things that you can do with your free codes. Um, I do want, I have a couple of notes on reviews. Um, uh, I've given you some some sites here uh, that are sites that you can, and they, they function a little bit differently. Each one of the sites is a little bit different, but it as essentially usually gives you the way to, uh, apportion some of your codes to that site. And then people will come on to the site or they send out emails uh, from the site, different, different mechanisms, uh, but they promote your book and then offer you, uh, offer, their clients or their uh, the people that receive their emails or people that visit their site an opportunity to get a free code of your book in exchange again these are uh these are intended to be in exchange for a review um they're not required but most people that understand that come to those sites understand that that's what their their trade is um one is called free audiobook codes.com there's another one called audiofreebies.com booksprout.com, storyorigin.com. And then of course, there's a number of ways you can distribute uh, audiobooks through book funnel. Um, you could use that as a reader magnet. 
Um, so again, you can provide the, you can just use book funnel as the distribution mechanism. You, maybe you run a Facebook ad or something like that, uh, that if people want to claim a free copy, they click that, it takes them over to book funnel. They sign up for your uh, newsletter and then they can get uh, a free audiobook code. So uh, those are some sites that you can use that will help you make the distribution so you don't necessarily have to do it manually, and you can take care uh, advantage of the uh, audience that they have already built. Um, reviews on, and just another point about reviews, reviews on audible.com are often harder to get than reviews for uh, books or eBooks. Um, for whatever reason, don't know why it is, because when you're finished with an audiobook, the the player actually brings up, you know, Audible's little player brings up a screen that says, would you like to leave a review? You know, all you have to do is click a star, you know, type it in on your phone, whatever. But for whatever reason, um, the organic rates of uh, reviews are are pretty low. It's, I suppose similar to they, what they are with uh, books and ebooks. The organic rates are about one in 50 uh, for a rating, so just click a star, and about uh, one in a hundred for reviews. So you got to sell a lot of audiobooks in order to get those organic reviews to come in. Um, and another note is that some reviewers will post their reviews on Amazon, and those don't populate necessarily over to Audible. Uh, they're a slightly different review format, even. So. Um, uh, because they may have purchased the audiobook via the product description page on on Amazon. So I've actually had people leave a review on my book on Amazon and mention the fact that hey I listened to this on the, on the audiobook uh, and it the review is there and it's not available over on audible.com. So uh, those don't populate across. Um Another a note on reviews is that uh, on Audible, um, unlike in, in Amazon, where they just click a star and write whatever they want to write, there's actually, it's divided up into three categories. There's a um, rating for the content, a rating for the narration, and then an overall rating. And people can click a star, so you can give it three stars for the content, four stars for the narrator, and and you know four stars overall. Um, so that's how you can do that on Audible. So they they appear a little slightly different. Um, what gets rolled up in the top, of course, is the overall rating. So if you have a great content, but for some reason you picked a narrator that people don't like as well, um, that can pull down your overall star rating. That's that's you know, listed along by the title and the search results and things like that. Um, the best way, of course, to get reviews is to ask individuals that you know, either you've had contact with via email, you gave them personally a free code, you knew them and they purchased it, but go out and ask. And don't be shy about doing that. Um, it is the best way to get reviews. Um, and, uh, uh, of course, um, if you don't ask, you're certainly, you're much, much less likely to get those things. So I don't think people are turned off if you, if, if they've read your book and they enjoyed it to leave you a review. All right. Some of the mechanics, this is real quick. Um, where do you find your free distribution codes? Um, up at the top of the ACX dashboard. So you got to go through ACX. You don't go through Audible. Um, you go into ACX you click your name, you get this little drop down menu and you put view sales dashboard. So um, that's what you click. And then on the sales dashboard, it's gonna have uh, all your different titles that you have available. And then there's promo codes for each one. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, up here too. You'll land on this tab on the sales dashboard that's gonna tell you how many sales you've had. Then there's the earnings report. Um, you, you do need to click this uh, tab over here for the promo codes. Um, that brings up this dashboard here um, that will list all your titles down here on the side. And then uh, you can push a blue button to get the promo codes for that particular um, audiobook. book. Uh, once you push that button, it will take a few seconds and then it will generate a screen that looks like this. Now, the promo code itself is right over here. You can you can either copy that and paste it into an email. Um, you could print those on little cards if you wanted to hand them out someplace, something like that. Um, it, also, if you push the blue button, it copies an entire blurb that says, 
you know, you have been given a free copy of Daughter of the Gods, a novel of the picks by Brian Cantor. Um, to redeem your free code, click this link, you know, those kinds of things. So it gives a whole blurb. Um, so if you click that button, it'll copy the whole blurb to the clipboard, and then you can uh, you can paste that into an email. Um, in this uh, right here, it'll show you which of these have been redeemed. Um, this is definitive. This means Audible. Somebody has gone in to Audible and redeemed that particular code. So it's not available anymore. You can't reuse it. Um, down here, it'll show the other ones that are available. Um, the uh, Don't worry so much about when it was uh, uh, generated, but you can see the redemption date over here. Um, you, these buttons over here on the right are just for your purposes to use. You can turn those on and off anytime you want to. Um, normally, you click that on to indicate that you gave that code away to somebody. So it's not uncommon for you to give away a free code and then somebody not redeem it. Um, usually, uh, so I'll click this and it'll say, hey, you 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 gave this away on June 7th uh, you know, of 2021. And if I go back in and it's a month or two later and they haven't redeemed it, if I know who it is, I may just you know shoot them a note and say, hey, were you still interested in the audio book because you haven't redeemed your code? Um, otherwise, I will just uh, click this off and reuse it with somebody else. Uh, and they, again, you can tell whether it's been redeemed or not through this column right down here. Um, but if you do have questions, you can always contact me. I am Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at mywordpublishing.com. Or you can go to the My Word Publishing website. Um, if you click on our team, I've got a page on there. And uh, you, there's ways you can contact me in there as well. So I'd uh, be happy to answer any additional questions that people might have. But those are some of the thoughts I had on audiobook marketing. I hope you have a, a huge success with your efforts to market your audiobooks.